Greetings, everyone. My name is Dr. Deborah, and I'm here to discuss a variety of biblical topics. Today, I'm going to discuss Japheth, Gomer, and Magog in part one of Old Testament white men we haven't discussed yet. Next week, we'll discuss part two, which will include Gog, Tubal, Meshach, Ashkenaz, Rephath, and Togarmah. If you would like immediate responses to your questions or concerns, please post them this evening during the Facebook Live presentation. I intend to respond immediately after today's Facebook Live presentation has ended and after I have posted it to my YouTube channel titled The Gospel of the Kingdom, period. I appreciate your gracious interest and I thank you for your kind support. Let's begin with our familiar scripture. Now these are the generations of the sons of Noah, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. And unto them were sons born after the flood. The sons of Japheth, that's who we're going to discuss today. Gomer will discuss, and Magog. And Madai and Yavan, which is Greece, Madai is the Medes. And Tubal, Meshesh, and Tiras. And the sons of Gomer, Ashkenaz, and Rephath, and Togarmah. And the sons of Yavan, Elisha, and Tarshish, and Ketim, and Dodanim. By these were the isles of the Gentiles divided in their lands, everyone after his tongue, after their families, and their nations. And as you have been taught, the Gentiles is anyone who is not a Jew. As you see, according to the Bible, that definition cannot be supported. Gentiles are white people, and all white people are descended from Japheth. Okay, because there were so many scriptures about these white men we hadn't discussed yet, I must share this information in two videos. Today in part one, we'll discuss the first three. Japheth, Gomer, and Magog. Now the name Japheth first appears in Genesis 5 and 32. And Noah was 500 years old, and Noah begat Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Now the word Japheth is 3315 in Strong's Concordance and is pronounced Yepheth. And it comes from 6601 which is patha, and that means to make simple or delude, to make roomy or trick. But the translators of the King James Version decide to define Japheth as expansion. So even though it's translated as those other definitions in other places, here they wanted it to mean expansion, and that's what they decided it's going to mean. Okay, since Noah, whose name means rest, was the father of Japheth, we need to discuss Noah first. These are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man and perfect in his generations, and Noah walked with God. And Noah begat three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. The earth also was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. And God looked upon the earth, and behold, it was corrupt, for all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. Even though we like to blame the television and film industry for the proliferation of violence among people, the Holy Bible states that people were extremely violent thousands of years before a television or film existed. Thus, God decided to restart the human family via a man named Noah. Now, Noah may have looked like this. Okay, this may have been Noah, courtesy of the Icons of the Bible series by international photographer James C. Lewis. Noah here is preaching to people. Second Peter, in the second chapter, fifth verse, describes Noah as a preacher of righteousness for years. And that's what Noah did before God killed all those evil people. So God did give evil people a chance to repent for their sin. Now God told Noah to build an ark 
which was a huge boat with one window and one door because God was going to kill everything alive by water, a lot of water. Then God told Noah to load clean and unclean beasts and birds and also food into the ark. It started raining and Noah's family went into the ark. In the 600th year of Noah's life, why did Noah live so long? Because there was no ultraviolet light. Noah lived for a little over 900 years, maybe 940, because there was no ultraviolet light, so people did not age as they do today. In the 600th year of Noah's life, in the second month, the 17th day of the month, the same day where all the fountains of the great deep broken up and the windows of heaven were open and the rain was upon the earth 40 days and 40 nights and the self same day entered Noah and Shem and Japheth the sons of Noah and Noah's wife and the three wives of his sons with them into the ark I haven't talked about what Noah's family looked like do I believe the three sons were white brown and black no because all three sons resembled each other like the sons of any family according to Charles Darwin dominant biological characteristics don't emerge in a population until after that population has been isolated for a very long period of time no isolation occurred until after the flood and after the Tower of Babel was almost constructed. Only after the human family separated into the three main tribes in Genesis 11 did Hamitic and Gentile racial characteristics manifest as dominant features in human beings. Please don't believe Noah's family was white, as the Catholic Church and the movie industry suggest. That's biologically impossible. No way did the black, brown, red, and yellow people of Africa and Asia come from eight white people. After over 40 days and nights ended, and God told Noah and his family to leave the ark, and the sons of Noah that went forth of the ark were Shem, Ham, and Japheth. And Ham is the father of Canaan. Now, there, that's called foreshadowing. That's a hint from the scriptures that's letting you know something is going to happen with Canaan. These are the three sons of Noah, and of them was the whole earth overspread. And Noah began to be an husband, ma'am, that's a farmer. And he planted a vineyard, and he drank of the wine, and was drunken. And he was uncovered within his tent. Okay. And Ham, the father of Canaan, now that's your second foreshadowing. The scriptures are letting you know that something's going to happen with Canaan. Not with Ham, but with Canaan. Saw the nakedness of his father and told the brothers without. Ham did nothing wrong. He just accidentally walked in on his father. Okay, that was an accident. It was not deliberate. And Shem and Japheth, I'm sorry, and Shem and Japheth took a garment and laid it upon both their shoulders and went backward and covered the nakedness of their father. And their faces were backward, and they saw not their father's nakedness. And Noah awoke from his wine and knew what his younger son had done unto him. Okay, now, God knew one day, to, as I said, the Catholic Church would try to deliberately confuse Ham and Canaan in the attempt to falsely put a curse on Ham and all his descendants. Now, here's a, an all-white version of this event. Ham here is the... Uh, the fat guy with the suntan, and Japheth is the ginger with the, uh, hap he's the one that's kind of happy. He's the happiest one. 
And Noah is the guy that's laying out kind of drunk. Okay. So, all right, let's go back and look at these scriptures. Did you see Ham doing anything wrong in these scriptures? We're going to review them. Now, let's look at that last verse. And Noah awoke from his wine and knew what his younger son had done to him. Now, what had the younger son, Canaan, done to his grandfather? We have to look at the, the two instances of foreshadowing, Canaan. Now, what Canaan had done, it was an act that he obviously had no business doing or his grandfather wouldn't have gotten mad and put a curse on him. Let's look at that word, younger son. Okay, that's why I underline it. What is a younger son? Please remember, the King James Version was translated in 1611. Whenever you read William Shakespeare's plays, which were written during the same time in England, there are notes in the margins that explain how certain words have meanings that have changed over the past 400 years. A younger son is not the youngest son, and Ham is not ever identified as a younger son either. A younger son is a grandson, not a son. The scriptures already foreshadowed Canaan twice as Noah's grandson. And now you're going to see why. Okay? So when he woke up, he knew that his younger son... His grandson, Canaan, the son of Ham, had done something that he had no business doing to his naked grandfather, even though grandfather was drunk. Okay? So, all right. So, this is Noah saying, cursed be Canaan. Ham is not ever cursed. Ham didn't do anything wrong. But Canaan did something wrong. Cursed be Canaan, a servant of servants shall he be unto his brethren. And he said, Blessed be the Lord God of Shem, and Canaan shall be his servant. God shall enlarge Japheth, and he shall dwell in the tents of Shem, and Canaan shall be his servant. And Noah lived after the flood 350 years. Now, enlarge is from 6601, the same word that makes up that uh, the word Japheth comes from. As I said before, it means to make simple or delude, to make roomy or trick. But here and only here in this, in this verse in the Bible is translated as enlarge here and nowhere else other than where Japheth is translated as expansion. Okay. So, did all the words of Noah's curse and blessing come to pass? Yes, Canaan, not Ham, was cursed for doing something horrible to his naked, drunk grandfather. And that curse was manifested because the Canaanites, who were the descendants of Canaan, they lost their land. God took their land from the Canaanites and gave it to the Jews. Okay, so that is how the curse was manifested. All right? And uh, it was not, it, there's, it was nothing wrong with their color. Okay, God made the children of Ham black, and he made some children brown and some yellow. Color is not a curse. Whenever God curses people and their color changes in the Holy Bible, it changes to white. I'm not going to talk about that right now. But I view the curse of Noah as a blessing to black Hamitic people. I'm not going to tell you why, because this video is about Japheth, but you can view it anytime. I have a video titled, Why Ham is Not Cursed, How the Curse of Noah is a Blessing to Black People. It's on my YouTube channel at the Gospel of the Kingdom period and is also a chapter in my book, The Black Sons of Abraham. Now usually the Bible lists sons in terms of seniority, 
but such is not the case when it comes to Shem, Ham, and Japheth. And we see it here in this scripture. These are the sons of Ham. I've taken it from the part of Bible at, right after the sons of Ham are described. After their families, after their tongues, in their countries, and in their nations. Unto Shem also, the father of all the children of Eber, the brother of Japheth the elder, even to him were children born. So the Bible does say that Japheth is the older son. But the order of seniority, when it comes to these three, is not ever identified. I really don't know why Japheth is always listed last, even though he was the oldest son, while Shem is always listed first, or why Ham is in the middle. Maybe one day you can inform me. After the Tower of Babel event, the descendants of the brothers spread out all over the planet. Okay, and it may have looked something like this. Okay, we have Noah's sons from Genesis 10. We have Japheth, and they went to Europe and Asia. And the sons of Ham went to Southwest Asia. They went all over Asia. Black men went all over the world. Okay, even to the Americas. Thank you. Canaan and uh, Africa. And uh, the Shemites were in the Middle East. And uh, now the way it looks, it looks like Japheth had the most sons, but Ham had the most grandsons, okay? And the word Ham means nations because he had more progeny than, Ham had more progeny than any of his brothers. Please don't think that uh, these three tribes were segregated from each other and did not mix because as I have read in multiple scriptures, the Shemites, the Hamites, and the Gentiles constantly intermingled during the Old and the New Testaments. Okay, now we're going to talk about Gomer, and that's 1586 in Strong's Concordance. Gomer is the ancient name for the people of Germany, and it means completion, to end, cease, to fail, or to finish. And that's kind of what happens to the tribe of Gomer and the rest of the Gentiles, also known as white people, in Ezekiel 38 as they prepare to fight against the Most High God. Okay. Now this is God talking to... Uh-oh. That's not the right heading. I'm sorry. It shouldn't say Genesis 38 and um, 3 through 6. It should say... Uh, Ezekiel 38, 3 through 6. Okay, and God is telling Ezekiel to say this. And say, thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I am against thee, O Gog, the chief prince of Meshesh and Tubal, and I will turn thee back and put hooks in thy jaws, and I will bring thee forth, and all thine army, horses, and horsemen, all of them clothed with all sorts of armor, even a great company with bucklers. What is a buckler? If you've watched those old-fashioned movies, they have a big shield about as big as a person. Then they have a little shield, maybe a little bit bigger than their hand, and it'll have a spike on it, and they'll just kind of punch people with that. That's called a buckler. And shields, all of them handling swords, Persia, Ethiopia, and Lib Libya. These are not Gentiles. Persia is Shemitic. Ethiopia and Libya are Hamitic. With them, all of them with shield and helmet. And there's Gomer. Germany's going to be there too. Gomer and all his bands, the house of Togarma of the North Quarters, and all his bands, and many people with thee. Now, that's the only reference to Gomer outside of the Genesis and First Chronicle genealogies. Now, our third white man in the Old Testament in today's video is Magog, which means region of Gog, who is another Gentile. Magog shows up in Ezekiel 38 and 39 when the white people again, are fighting against the Most High God. Okay. And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, set thy face against Gog, the land of Magog, the chief prince of Meshesh and Tubal, and prophecy against him. 
and say, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I am against thee, O God, the chief prince of Meshesh and Tubal, and I will turn thee back and put hooks in thy jaws, and I will bring thee forth in all thine army, horses and horsemen, all of them clothed with all sorts of armor, even a great company of bucklers. I know it's the same scripture. I just want to show it to you twice. And shields, all of them handling swords. Now, I wonder when Jonathan Kahn is going to write a book about that. Okay, here's another one. And I will send fire on Magog, and among them that dwell carelessly in the isles, and they shall know that I am the Lord. So will I make my holy name known in the midst of my people Israel, and I will not let them pollute my holy name any more, and the heathen shall know that I am the Lord, the Holy One in Israel. So, again, these scriptures that I've just shown you relate to that great future war that will take place between God and white people around Jerusalem. Okay, thank you for listening. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel. My Facebook channel is Dr. Deborah 7 p.m. S-A-T-E-S-T. -E -S my YouTube channel is the Gospel of the Kingdom, period. And you may download my books from drdebrabooks.com. And I would like you to follow me on my Facebook channel and subscribe or subscribe to my YouTube channel so you won't miss a single video. Please like, share, and make comments on these videos, especially if you learn something about the scriptures. This little skinny 19-page book is How to Read the Bible. You can download that for free. This one is Time Out for the Reprobate Saint. It's about evil people in the church and the different types of people in the church. And the scriptures are in red, as you see. And this beautiful artwork is done by the late Eric Dinkins and Ariel Echovaria, and this book, the most important one, The Gospel of the Kingdom, because it tells you how to have a relationship with God. And the scriptures are in blue, as you see, and it's a catechism. It's in question and answer format. And my most recent book, The Black Sons of Abraham, and a wonderful cover art is by Darian Greer. And these are free and can be Download it at any time from my website, drdebrabooks.com. Maybe you'll join me next Saturday at 7 p.m. in the Eastern Time Zone when I plan to finish discussing Old Testament white men in the Bible, namely Gog, Tubal, Meshach, Ashkenaz, Rephath, and Togarma. After that, I plan to produce a video titled Why Racism is the Catholic Church's Attempt to Prove God Wrong. Three weeks from the day, I intend to begin a new series titled, Why White People Who Are Not Christians Are the Heathens of the New Testament, to be followed by a series titled, King David and the Brothers, Lord Willing. Blessings in Jesus' sweet name.